Let's talk shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. What's up guys, Chrissy James here. Today, we'll be diving into camera essentials, mainly the exposure triangle. It's all about harnessing and mastering the three powers of photography, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. You can't use one without the other. This is because they work, the three of them work together in perfect harmony to create a well-exposed photo. So whether you're experienced or getting into photography, you have to learn about them. So, we have shutter speed. Shutter speed refers to how long the shutter of the camera stays open. This determines how the photo is taken. Because a fast shutter captures no movement, it freezes the subject in motion. While a slow shutter allows some movement to go in the photo, this is more used for a stylistic effect with motion blur, like long exposure photography with waterfalls, rivers, light painting, etc. Shutter speed controls many aspects of photography. Whether you're capturing fast-paced movement or dreamy long exposure photos, you have to learn about them. Here's an example of me doing a jumping jack. This was taken at 1 over 400 of a second. As you can see, it's nice and sharp, everything is in motion, there's no motion blur on my limbs. Now if you take a look at the same photo taken at 1 50th of a second, as you can see on my limbs, there's motion blur. This is because my limbs moved while the shutter was open. Because the shutter was open longer, it, allows my it allowed my limbs to move more in the frame, which creates motion blur. Here's a picture of a waterfall, which I took on a trip that I went to. This photo was taken at 1 over 500 of a second. As you can see, the water was frozen in place and um, it looks kind of jaggedy. Now drop that sh shutter down to let's say 1 over 30 of a second you get a picture looking like this. Where the water flows down nice and smooth and it looks so creamy. Now onto aperture. Aperture controls two main aspects of photography. How much light is let into the lens to hit the sensor and the depth of field in the photo. A wide aperture, let's say at f1.8, lets in a lot of light. It's open the widest it could go. Now, this allows for the image to look brighter. Not only that, it allows to isolate the subject from the background, giving that creamy, smooth bokeh. This is because the more light that enters and hits the sensor, the more shallow the depth of field it is. A wide aperture, let's say f24, the opening is not so wide, it's very small. And because of this, not a lot of light enters. So everything is in focus and the depth of field is very wide. Now you combine that, you combine shutter speed and aperture together and you get a photo looking like this. As you can see, I'm separated from the background and I'm in focus. The background is nice and smooth and creamy. So with a wide aperture, you set your shutter speed so that the photo will not be overexposed. Now look at the same photo and this gives it a aperture of f12. There's more stuff in the in focus. All the garbage, all the leaves, everything in the background is in focus. So in order to get this picture, I had to drop my shutter speed down to allow more light into the photo. That's how you work those two together. Next up is ISO. ISO essentially is how sensitive your sensor is to light. It's basically fake light. So if you want more light in a scene where there isn't any more available light, you just crank that ISO up and it get brighter. But remember, with each increment of ISO that you increase, the grainier and noisier your photo gets. This is because the camera is compensating for the camera is comp compensating for the lack of light by raising the sensitivity of the sensor. So this allows for the pixels to show more. 
so you get more of a grainy image. So now that we've learned about ISO, use these three things together and you'll be able to tell a scene whether your shutter speed was not fast enough, whether your aperture was not wide enough, or your ISO was too wide or not high enough. Go out and keep shooting and you'll become better photographers. See you guys later.